Welcome to Terminology in Healthcare and Public Health Settings, Ear, Nose, Throat, Eyes, and Vision. This is Lecture A, Ear, Nose, and Throat. A doctor who treats patients with problems of the ear, nose, or throat is sometimes called an ENT specialist. An otolaryngologist is another name for this type of specialist. The objectives for this unit, ear, nose, throat, eyes, and vision, are to define, understand, and correctly pronounce medical terms related to the ears, nose, and throat, and eyes and vision. Describe common diseases and conditions with an overview of various treatments related to the ears, nose, and throat, and eyes and vision. Let's start with the anatomy of the ear. Your ear has three main parts, outer, middle, and inner. We use all three parts of the ear to hear. Sound waves travel through your outer ear. These sound waves reach your middle ear, where they make your eardrum move or vibrate. The vibrations are transmitted through three tiny bones, referred to as ossicles, in your middle ear. The bones in the middle ear are named after their shapes, the malleus is shaped like a hammer, the incus is shaped like an anvil, and the stapes is shaped like a stirrup. The malleus is attached to the tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane, or eardrum, is a thin partition located between the external auditory, or ear canal, and the middle ear. The inner ear is located in a large cavity in the temporal bones of the cranium, or skull. The inner ear contains both bony and membranous structures that are surrounded by fluids. The organs of hearing are found in the cochlea. The cochlea contains three canals that are filled with fluids. In the inner ear, the organ of corti contains receptor cells. These cells are affected by sound vibrations. This results in nerve impulses being forwarded to the brain for interpretation. Your brain, in turn, recognizes the impulses as sounds. The sensory organs in the inner ear also help to maintain our sense of balance, or equilibrium. There are two main types of hearing loss. The first type occurs when your inner ear, or auditory nerve, is damaged, and the result is permanent hearing loss. The other kind of hearing loss occurs when sound waves cannot reach your inner ear. There can be several reasons why this happens. Earwax can build up in your ear canal, or your eardrum might be punctured. These are two examples of conditions that can result in hearing loss. If left untreated, hearing problems can become worse. Possible treatments include hearing aids, cochlear implants, special training, certain medicines, and surgery. An acoustic neuroma is a non-cancerous tumor that develops on the nerve that connects the ear to the brain. The tumor usually grows slowly. As it grows, it presses against the hearing and balance nerves. Symptoms include a loss of hearing on one side, ringing in the ears, dizziness and balance problems. Diagnostic tests include ear exams, hearing tests, and scans. As far as treatment goes, if the tumor stays small, you may only need to have it followed regularly by a physician. If you do need treatment, surgery and radiation are options. If tumors affect both hearing nerves, it is often because of a genetic disorder called neurofibromatosis. These tumors can also eventually cause numbness or paralysis of the face, or press against the brain and become life-threatening.
If you are lightheaded and feel that you will lose your balance, then you are experiencing dizziness. Vertigo is a sensation of motion in which an individual's surroundings seem to whirl around. Ear infections are common in babies and young children. Most often, the infection affects the middle ear and is called otitis media. Symptoms include tugging or pulling at the ears, crying, ear drainage, trouble sleeping, balance difficulties, and hearing problems. Treatment includes pain relievers, medicines such as antibiotics, and, with repeated infections, small tubes placed surgically inside the ears. Meniere's disease can cause severe dizziness, a roaring sound in your ear called tinnitus, hearing that comes and goes, and the feeling of ear pressure or pain. It usually affects just one ear, and it is a common cause of hearing loss. Scientists do not know the etiology or cause of this disorder. They believe it has to do with the fluid levels or mixing of the fluids in the canals of your inner ear. Symptoms can occur suddenly and happen every day or as seldom as once a year. Unfortunately, there is currently no cure for Meniere's disease. However, you may control symptoms by changing your diet or taking medicine so that your body retains less fluids. Severe cases may require surgery. Another cause of hearing loss involves excessive noise. Noise is all around us, coming from TVs to lawnmowers. Harmful sounds that are too loud, or loud sounds over a long time, can damage the sensitive structures of the inner ear and cause noise-induced hearing loss. Hazardous sound levels are louder than 80 decibels, which isn't as loud as traffic on a busy street. Listening to loud music, especially on headphones, is a common cause of noise-induced hearing loss.
tinnitus is described as a ringing or roaring in your ears and can affect your hearing, working, and even sleeping. Causes of tinnitus include hearing loss, exposure to loud noises, or medicines you may be taking for a different problem. Tinnitus may also be a symptom of other health problems, such as allergies, high or low blood pressure, tumors, and problems in the heart, blood vessels, jaw, and neck. Treatments include hearing aids, sound masking devices, and medicines. Now let's move on to the anatomy of the nose and throat. The nose is the external opening to the respiratory tracts that acts as a filter and humidifier for the air you breathe. It removes dust, germs, and irritants. It warms and moistens the air to keep your lungs and tubes from drying out. Your nose also contains the nerve cells that help your sense of smell. When there is a problem with your nose, your whole body can suffer. For example, the stuffy nose of the common cold can make it hard for you to breathe, sleep, or get comfortable. The pharynx, commonly called the throat, connects the mouth and nose to the larynx. The larynx, commonly called the voice box, connects the pharynx with the trachea. The trachea, commonly called the windpipe, serves as a pathway for air to reach the chest. An allergy is a reaction of your immune system to something that does not bother most other people. People who have allergies often are sensitive to more than one substance. Common allergens include pollen, dust mites, mold spores, pet dander, certain foods like peanuts or seafood, insect stings, and certain medicines. The causes of allergies are varied. Scientists think both genes and the environment have something to do with it. Normally, your immune system fights germs. In most allergic reactions, however, your immune system is responding to a false alarm. Symptoms of allergies include a runny nose, sneezing, itching, rashes, swelling, or asthma. If you have a severe allergic reaction called anaphylaxis, it can be life-threatening. Another disorder which affects the nasal cavity is the common cold. This is the most common illness easily spread by touching your eyes or nose after you touch surfaces with cold germs or viruses on them. You can also breathe in the germs. There is no cure, but treatment includes getting rest, drinking fluids, gargling with warm salt water, using cough drops or throat sprays, and taking cold medicines. Another common nasal cavity disorder is hay fever. Hay fever is usually triggered by a change in season 
and is related to the trees, weeds, and grasses releasing tiny pollen grains into the air. Symptoms include sneezing, coughing, post-nasal drip, itching eyes, nose, and throat, and dark circles under the eyes. Taking allergy medicines and using nasal sprays can relieve symptoms of hay fever. There are a few more nasal cavity disorders that we should mention here. A deviated septum is a shifting of the wall that divides the nasal cavity into halves. Nasal polyps are soft growths that develop on the lining of your nose or sinuses. And you are all probably familiar with nosebleeds, which occur when there is bleeding or hemorrhaging from the nose. Rhinitis is an inflammation of the nose and sinuses sometimes caused by allergies. The main symptom is a runny nose. Sinusitis means your sinuses are infected or inflamed. Your sinuses are hollow air spaces within the bones surrounding the nose. Your sinuses produce mucus, which drains into the nose. If your nose is swollen, your sinuses can be blocked and result in pain and infection. Sinusitis can be acute, defined as lasting for less than four weeks, or chronic, defined as lasting much longer. Symptoms of sinusitis include fever, weakness, fatigue, cough, congestion, and post-nasal drip. Treatments include antibiotics, decongestants, pain relievers, saline nasal sprays, and vaporizers. And finally, we should mention nasal cancer, which is also called cancer of the nasal cavity, or cancer of the paranasal sinus. The paranasal sinuses are small hollow spaces around the nose. They are lined with cells that make mucus, which keeps your nose from drying out. The nasal cavity is the passageway just behind your nose through which air passes on the way to your throat as you breathe. Cancer of the nasal cavity and paranasal sinuses is rare. Men are more likely than women to develop nasal cancer and most patients are older than 45. Infection may eventually become a symptom, but there may be no symptoms at first, making it harder to diagnose in the early stages. Treatment options include surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Some conditions of the throat are the same conditions that occur in the nasal cavity, such as allergies and the common cold. However, there are also conditions that are associated with the throat. Coughing is a reflex that keeps your throat and airways clear. While it can be annoying, it serves a purpose in that it helps your body heal or protect itself. Coughs can be acute or chronic. Various causes of coughs include asthma, allergies, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD, smoking, croup in young children, and some medicines. Treatments include drinking water or adding water to the air you breathe, and taking antihistamines and cough medicines.
Now let's discuss common head and neck cancers. These include cancers of the mouth, nose, sinuses, salivary glands, throat, and lymph nodes in the neck. Most begin in the moist tissues that line the mouth, nose, and throat. Symptoms include a lump or sore that does not heal, a sore throat that does not go away, trouble swallowing, or a change or hoarseness in the voice. The main risk factor for head and neck cancers is tobacco and alcohol use. In fact, 85% of head and neck cancers are linked to tobacco use, including both smoking and using smokeless tobacco. If found early, these cancers are often curable. Treatments may include surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, or a combination of these. Treatments can affect eating, speaking, or even breathing, so most patients require rehabilitation. Here are some key word parts related to the ears, nose, and throat, along with their meanings. In the third column, you can see some of the medical terms that we can create by combining word parts. You should return to the online medical dictionary to hear the pronunciation and become familiar with the meaning of the created terms. Now look at the next slide and test your detective skills. A six-month-old baby is brought to the pediatric clinic. The mother states the baby has been crying nonstop not sleeping, has a fever, and is pulling at his ears. If the physician notes a bulging membrane in the exam of the right ear, what would be a likely diagnosis? Did you guess otitis media? Ear infections are common in babies and young children. Most often, the infection affects the middle ear and is called otitis media. Symptoms include tugging or pulling at the ears, crying, ear drainage, trouble sleeping, balance difficulties, and hearing problems. The doctor uses an otoscope and inspects the middle ear. If the tympanic membrane is bulging, a diagnosis of otitis media is documented. This concludes Lecture A of Ears, Nose, Throat, Eyes, and Vision. In summary, we have discussed and pronounced medical terms related to the ears, nose, and throat. In addition, we have described common diseases and conditions with an overview of various treatments related to the ears, nose, and throat.